It might rain today, so you had better bring an umbrella. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use the very common sentence structure using had better. Understanding this modal verb and being able to use it in correct sentence structure and correct context is going to make you sound very advanced and very natural in English. Of course, I'm Jennifer from jforestenglish.com and this channel is dedicated to helping you sound like a fluent, confident, natural English speaker. Now, before we go any further, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. Now, let's dive into this video. Had better. That's the sentence structure that you're going to learn today and you're going to get really comfortable with this modal verb so you can confidently add it to your speech. Now, this lesson is coming as a student request from Adida and I'm very happy that the student requested the video because it's a very useful one. Now, let's go back to the example sentence I shared at the very beginning of this video. I said, you'd better bring an umbrella. You'd better bring an umbrella. So let's first take a look at the sentence structure. In order to form a sentence using had better, you need to pay attention to correct sentence structure. And with this modal verb, first we need a subject, and then had, it's always had. The verb tense does not change, okay? Always had, then you need better, and following that, you need a base verb. Always a base verb. A base verb is simply the infinitive structure without to. So take a look at the sentence structure and make sure you memorize it because in order to use this modal verb correctly, it needs to be in the correct sentence structure. Now, looking at the sentence structure, I want you to listen to that sentence again. And I want you to think about what I'm doing to take this sentence structure and use it naturally, okay? Listen to my example sentence again. You'd better bring an umbrella. You'd better bring an umbrella. What do you notice? Well, do you hear me say had? Hmm, a native English speaker would definitely hear it, but they don't hear the word had. All they hear is the d, d. And the reason why is because I'm forming a contraction. Now, I would say that a native English speaker is going to use the contracted form 95% of the time. So if you want to sound natural, which I assume you do, I highly encourage you to use the contraction. So of course, to form the contraction, we just take our subject and we take had and we just take the D from had and we add it to our subject. Now we do that with every single subject. So let me show you an example with a different subject. I could say, they'd better file the report. They'd better file the report. So here, of course, I'm taking that D from had and I'm adding it to they. Now for pronunciation, it's very subtle, okay? But the fact that you have better, you better, a native English speaker understands that there's only one sentence structure that uses that. And that's with this, you'd better. So we don't actually need to hear the had in order to understand what verb tense is being used. Now, if it's a little too difficult for you to use that contracted form now, that's okay, but I definitely encourage you to get comfortable listening to it because that's how a native English speaker is going to use this with you. I'm not gonna say, you had better. That doesn't sound natural to me. Let me give you another example sentence using a different subject. And I want you to tell me what's different this time. He'd better not be late. 
He'd better not be late. Hmm, what's different? Well, of course, I made this negative. So you can use this in the negative form. And when you do, just know that you take not, that's how you make it negative, and the not comes before the base verb, which also means it comes after better. So whichever one is easy for you to remember it, that's fine. But the placement is always in that same place. And notice I'm still using that contraction. All right, so now you know correct sentence structure, you know how to form contractions, and you know how to use it in the negative. Now you're probably wondering, but Jennifer, what does this mean? Well, maybe you've already understood some of the meaning just based on context. But if not, let me be very clear about what this means. Now let's go back to what I said at the very beginning of this video, but listen to the additional information which gives you context. I said it might rain. It might rain. I look outside, I see some dark clouds, it might rain. You'd better bring an umbrella. You'd better bring an umbrella. Now, you can think of this simply as you should bring an umbrella. You'd better bring an umbrella. You should bring an umbrella. They have the same meaning. Now, you can also think of this as it would be a good idea to. It would be a good idea to bring an umbrella. You'd better bring an umbrella. It'd be a good idea. Why? Because it might rain. So basically when you're making a recommendation of the action you want the person to take or in the negative, the action you don't want them to take, you can use this modal verb. Subject had better base verb. So it's a very simple meaning. I think you'll have no problem with that meaning. I just really want you to pay attention to that sentence structure, making sure you're forming the sentences correctly. And then once you master that, you can move on to adding the contractions to sound really natural. So now that you know how to form the sentence, form contractions, use it in the negative, and you know what it means, now it's your time to practice. So let me give you a scenario. Let's imagine that tomorrow you have a very important meeting and that meeting is at nine o'clock a.m. So you can decide why that meeting is important. Maybe you're meeting a new client for the first time. Maybe you're discussing the future of your career with your boss. Maybe you're meeting the CEO for the first time. Maybe you're giving a presentation. Whatever you decide is fine. So you have this important meeting tomorrow at 9 a.m. I want you to write a sentence in the comments using our modal verb and tell us something that you'd better do or not do to prepare for this meeting. So of course, to get you started, you could say, I have this really important meeting tomorrow. I'd better and hmm, fill in the rest of the sentence. Of course, you can add more than one sentence as well. The more you add, the more practice you get. So maybe it's a good idea to form a sentence in the positive form and the negative form. And make sure you use that contraction. I can't wait to read your sentences. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe. Now before you go, make sure you head on over to my website, j4senglish.com, and download your free speaking guide. In this guide, I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. And until next time, happy studying. All right, awesome job adding this modal verb to your vocabulary. You are sounding very advanced right now. Now, before you go, make sure you subscribe and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye.